Let's install Veritas Backup Exec 20.1 on a Windows 2016 server. I've got my ISO mounted as a drive. We'll go ahead and double click and we'll double click on the browser. There are some getting started options, pre-installation, that kind of thing. So it doesn't hurt to go ahead and check out what needs to be uh, installed ahead of time before doing the actual installation. We can do a pre-environment check by clicking on that. And we can see that most everything is looking good. We don't have any reds, so that's good. That means we can go ahead and install. We don't have a domain. That's one of the uh, warnings, but it's not necessarily an error. And the Windows Assessment Deployment Kit, if you just want to click on that, you can see it now requires that you install that, the ADK, before the disaster recovery is going to work. So let's go ahead and click Finish. And it looks like we're ready to do the installation. So we'll click on Installation. And we have a few options. The agent for Windows goes on any computer where we can't push the agent out uh, through backup exec, uh, the program itself. The simplified disaster recovery disk creation wizard is something we would do after we install backup exec, but we do have to put on the ADK, as I mentioned earlier. Let's go ahead and click on backup exec itself and then click on install. Right now I'm running on a virtual machine with eight gigs of RAM four processors and 32 gigs of space, which so far is plenty to install backup exec. We need to accept the licensing agreement. Click next. Let's go ahead and choose a custom installation just so we can see all the different options. We want to install backup exec software and features. We also have the option to install the console only, which we don't want to do. We actually want to install the full version of backup exec and the console. We can also push out a remote installation to another computer as well, which at this time we do not want to do. That does take a long time to do, so make sure you have planned a lot of time for it. And once again, we see our environment checks. Looks like we passed with just a couple of warnings. We'll go ahead and click Next. Now here's where you would import your license file. I'm just going to go ahead and click Next, and I'll get a 60-day uh, demo, which I can go ahead and click OK on. We now see the new features to select. You've got bronze, silver, and gold. So by default, it checks all of the bronze and silver options, and you can see the different options here. We've got under the bronze, you've got VMware, deduplication, and under the silver, it also adds the agent for Linux and applications and databases. Applications and databases is pretty much any server that has more than just file, ser file and print server types of features installed on it, such as if you have SQL or X Microsoft Exchange, et cetera. Those would be applications and databases. And for backup exec gold, that has the copy server configuration. And as you can see on the right-hand side, it allows you to copy the configuration settings between more than one backup exec server. So this would be for larger environments. If we click on the advanced disk backup option or feature, that allows us to do things such as a synthetic backup, which we'll talk about in upcoming videos, true image restore, and off-host backup. The central admin server feature, uh, once again, is part of the gold install, allows you to monitor multiple different servers from one location. Managed backup exec server, also part of the gold. NDMP, this is going to be used mainly for NAS devices. Uh, remote agent, media agent for Linux. This allows you to back up different types of storage that are attached to a Linux server, which is kind of an unusual thing. So that's uh, not just backing up a Linux server, but actually having the storage attached to a Linux server. And then you've got the virtual tape library support. This is not going to be commonly used, as most people just use the hard drive type of option for disk-based backup. But since nobody really uses the tape drives anymore, they've created this virtual tape library recognition option. Go ahead and click Next. We'll choose our language. Next. We've got our C drive available and the default location for the program. 
and you can see it's going to need an additional 500 megs for SQL Express if it's not already installed. If you have a SQL server at this time, you will be prompted to either create a database or attach to a database. Uh, I don't have SQL installed, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the SQL Express that it will automatically install for me. Been granted the rights as log on as a service, so we're good there. And there's our option to create a SQL Express instance, or you can, as I mentioned earlier, attach to a SQL Server 2008 or newer. And we'll go ahead and scroll down, make sure it has everything we want, and it does, and now install. We can see we were successful in installation that took roughly 15 minutes, and uh, you should see that it might take a little less on a higher end type of server, but uh, we're just using, like I said, a virtual machine in this case. And we'll go ahead and uncheck the view readme file. Let's click finish. And we're going to skip the survey. And now we see a new icon on our desktop on the left hand side. Go ahead and double click on that. We have a list of new items that are in backup exec version 20.1, which you can feel free to go ahead and read. Let's go ahead and click X on that. And now we see our home screen. So it looks very similar to the previous versions of Backup Exec. Go ahead and click Job Monitor, nothing in there yet. Storage and Reporting. We'll go over all these different features in upcoming videos.